Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. We have Marad Gazdiev. We have his uh, Twitter feed up right now, and he has posted this morning a 64-kilometer-long video footage of a Russian convoy, uh, and if I'm not mistaken, actually headed to the Ukraine border. It was from Maxar's uh, satellite website there. They posted this this morning. Uh, and it just says satellite imagery company Maxar publishes footage of a 64 kilometer long Russian military convoy. Doesn't give any more details in that, but as you go through the video, uh, it, it, it definitely is 64 kilometers long, and in some places the convoy is double lined and not single lined, uh, which makes you wonder, as I've already been saying to you guys, this war is going to broaden. It's not just going to be in Ukraine. Uh, you don't bring that much military equipment uh, to the battlefront and it just remain uh, to, to one territory uh, or, or one, one country there. I, I just can't imagine that. I, I remember, in fact, when Russia and China were doing their military drills uh, in eastern Russia, Murad uh, who's a, we consider him a friend of ours there. He's the RT correspondent there. He had sent me actually photographs of that. We'd published those on our website, uh, or actually was it on our website or actually one of our one of our videos there. I think it's also on our VK channel uh, over on the uh, on the app there that the Russians use there. So uh, we wanted you to be able to see this footage to let you know this is not just some um, passive war. There you go right there. Now you're getting your double columns now. You can see on the screen on how well you guys can see that there uh, as this satellite imagery is following this massively long um, uh, military convoy. And I assume, I do assume that this is actually still in Russia, headed to the border there uh, of Ukraine. So how is this going to play out? How are they planning on uh, dividing all this up? Where is the convoy actually at? Is it in deeper in Russia? Is it closer to the Ukraine border? I don't know the answer to all that information as of right now, uh, but it is very interesting to see such a massive convoy. And then, of course, you can't help but wonder how in the world does Russia get fuel to all this convoy? Now, I'm sure there's fuel tankers in that con convoy there. Also, Murad Gazdiev, his Twitter page here, you might want to follow him. He uh, has some very, very, very interesting uh, information. Some of it's in Russian, some of it's in English. This one right here is in English here. Some areas of Ukraine military defenses have collapsed or retreated, but in other places such as around Donetsk International Airport, there has been little change. The front lines are as they were six years ago. Let's listen to what Murad has to say right here. Donetsk is very much in full swing. We are just west of uh, Donetsk city, where the Ukrainian front line has collapsed. We are uh, we're now on our way to several settlements that have uh, been taken by uh, forces, the militia of the Republic of, of Donetsk. But the fighting here is ongoing, and as you can see, artillery exchanges, both incoming fire and outgoing fire, are intense. We'll be going to, uh, actually we'll be also getting on, um, uh, we're going to have uh, Russell Bentley come on our program here. He's been going to the front lines quite frequently, uh, giving us updates there. And I did reach out to uh, Murad uh, in this case right here. Let me just see what he says here. We warn you, this could be this could turn graphic here because we do see people laying on the street, and I'm assuming they may have been killed by shrapnel. No, they're actually being. I'm sorry, nobody killed. Good thing there. Looters are detained near the airport in Kiev. At least one person shot. Graphic footage cut. Uh, Okay. So yeah, Murad has got a lot of good information here on his Twitter page there. And uh, not everything goes on his Twitter page because he is RT reporter. So, you know, he, he, a lot of things are on the uh, RT uh, uh, 
uh, or, you know, be on RT News is where you would actually see that, depending on how much they allow to pop in there. Anyway, let's move on to some other things as well. Ukraine has a biological research facility, says Under Secretary of State Victoria Nuland, which asked about Senator Rubio if Ukraine has biological or chemical weapons and says she worried Russia may get them, but she says she's 100% sure if there's a biological attack, it's Russia. Hmm, that's interesting. Always blame it on somebody else. Minute, Listen to this. Ask you, um, does Ukraine have chemical or biological weapons? Uh, Ukraine has... Uh biological research facilities, which in fact we are now quite concerned Russian troops, Russian forces may be seeking to uh, gain control of. So we are working with the Ukrainians on how they can prevent any of those research materials from falling into the hands of uh, Russian forces should they approach. I'm sure you're aware that the Russian propaganda the groups are already putting out there all kinds of information about how they've uncovered a plot by the Ukrainians to release biological weapons in the country and with NATO's coordination. If there's a biological or chemical weapon incident or, uh, or attack inside of Ukraine, is there any doubt in your mind that 100% it would be the Russians that would be behind it? There is no doubt in my mind, Senator, and it is... Isn't that interesting? Yeah, blame Russia. Seems like the West is number one on the list of being able to do uh, false flag attacks, just like they don't want you to know about those little dirty bombs floating around New York right now. They've been trying to keep that all under wraps as well, right? Well, let's 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 put the smoking gun out right here. Virus, if this is not a concern, if these are just simple viruses, pathogens, why are U.S. officials so worried? Journalist Degay uh, Tanzieva. I may be pronouncing her name wrong, a Russian potentially controlling uh, Pentagon-funded biological labs in Ukraine. All right, let's take a peek at this little portion of uh, her interview here. And under, uh, in, um, under uh, this biological engagement program, and according to other documents which I obtained from the US Federal Contracts Registry, until 2020, the Pentagon or uh, the Defense Threat Reduction Agency, which is an agency part of the Pentagon uh, in charge of this program, allocated $80 million, $80 million for this program in Ukraine. People can judge themselves. The United States says we have nothing to do with uh, uh, bio laboratories in Ukraine. Okay, but they paid $80, $80 million in addition to this to uh, 23 million dollars for two new bio laboratories. So, what are uh, what uh, was this money paid for? 80 million dollars plus 23 million dollars. This means more than 100 million dollars for what in Ukraine under this program. Imagine that the United States has spent over a hundred million dollars on the biological labs, and that's not just the United States. That is that is the subcontractors for the Pentagon funding the biological labs in Ukraine. No wonder why the United States wants to get control of that area all over again. Now we'll listen in here to uh, this is Foreign Minister Lavrov. He is talking about uh, the 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 labs that have been discovered there as well. Let's listen into this one. Pentagon build two biological war labs and they have been developing pathogens there in Kiev and in, in Odessa and now they are concerned that they may lose control over these labs and you know what it may be like in future and Americans decline flatly and resolutely to start a inspection mechanism as part of the Convention for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons and they build new chemical and biological facilities all across Russian borders and uh, you know many other developments happened the CIA has been on the ground in, in droves and they have been training the Ukrainian army not to wage a war with Poland apparently and when developments in Iraq happened when the United States claimed it was a threat to the US national security did anyone ask back then why the United States decided to bring a territory 10,000 kilometers away from the American coasts to order? Because the U.S. is a great power, but when 
Russia says that there is a threat to us, they start telling us that there is not a threat at all. But you can get the gist of it right there. Again, more of the uh, biological labs, things like that. I want to share this one here with you as well. I found on Twitter. This is uh, supposedly the Ukrainians are defusing a, a bomb that Russia dropped there. Uh, this one is hysterical to me. And I don't know why people don't pick up on it, right? They're taking a bottle of water. They're going to take and defuse this bomb with a bottle of water, pulling out the detonating pin off of this bomb here, right? Now, what is it that would make you find this suspicious? Anything. Has anybody even, has anybody picked up on it already, right? Uh, there's a couple of things in my opinion. One, they got the blanket on this thing here, so you can't see any markings or anything. That's kind of suspicious. But more importantly, you're talking about the type of bomb that leaves a crater that'll be about, oh, I don't know, some uh, 20 foot deep in the ground. And when that bomb hits the ground, that bomb itself goes into the ground quite uh, at a quite of a depth before it detonates. So you're not going to just have this thing sitting up here on the side of the road like no big deal. And it just, oop, it just flopped out of the airplane and landed on the ground right there. Oh, no. Uh, you want to talk about propaganda. There's your propaganda piece right there. That looks like something that the White Helmets would do, right? And they're actually going to be headed to Ukraine, so I wouldn't be a bit surprised there. Uh, High-level talks between Russia and Ukraine failed to reach a broad ceasefire. We know that now Turkey is... Uh, uh, it says here, the Russian-Ukrainian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, which who was speaking earlier there, Dmitry Kuleba, met in Turkish city of uh, Ant Antiala on Thursday. Though no agreement to end hostilities was reached, the talks are the highest level so far between the, the countries. Meanwhile, the bombing of maternity hospital by Russian forces in the city of Maripol on Wednesday uh, continues to spark international outrage. And I don't know the details behind it. It's one reason why we haven't covered that as of yet. Uh, it could be that that's another one of the little false flag things that they're putting out. Could have been Ukraine did it. It is so difficult to know for sure uh, on these things. There's propaganda does come out on both sides of the war. I realize that. So I, I am mindful either way. Uh, and we don't want to go propaganda in either direction here. All right. There's a big thing that started coming out. People were, were sharing this with me. Friday, Russia was going to be doing something that's supposed to be... Uh, some kind of surprise thing that's going to happen come Friday. So I tried to do a little digging to see if there was any, any what could be happening Friday. And the only thing that I found so far was on this tweet town, this post right here by Anthony uh, Gariffa, who stated here, Russia to disconnect global internet on March the 11th. That's what we're finding that may be the big thing there. Russia began active preparations disconnect from the global internet no later than March 11th. All servers and domains must be transferred to the Russian zone. In addition, detailed data on the network infrastructure of the sites is being collected. Seems to me it's more setting up for new world order. And I know there's those that believe that Russia is fighting the new world order, but I don't, I can't really, I, I don't see that. I, you know, listen, unfortunately, uh, Although we could say that Putin is liberating Ukraine, at least liberating the ethnic Russians that are in Ukraine, uh, he still is controlled by uh, the uh, Chabad organization. Let's face it, right? Uh, but at any rate there, uh, I, I highlighted a couple of places in the article I wanted, you to, wanted to read to you, though. Uh, he's, Vladimir Putin says the Internet is a CIA project. But the thing is, most people know and don't seem to care that the U.S. and every other government also does it. They just have a bigger smile on their face and more propaganda on TVs and social media than Russia and China combined. Well, we'll see how Russia pulls out of the global Internet. But the companies tripping over themselves to destroy the lives of millions of innocent Russian citizens in the way that they're pulling their products and services right up to Visa and MasterCard, the damage is done. Russia might as well do it now or millions of computers and smartphones, TVs and consoles and everything in between will be useless. They are all require or utilize services on the internet. So, you know, it's just a move that they're anticipating is going to happen. Uh, last but not least here, I thought this was interesting here about the gas prices. Uh, the uh, U.S. House Press Secretary uh, decides to speak about this. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself as I listen to her speak, 
Uh, well, it's another way to kind of blame everything on Russia because uh, after all, Hunter Biden and his father Joe, they've been pilfering millions of dollars out of the Ukrainians and Russians over uh, the uh, Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline. So in other words, every cubic meter that doesn't get shipped into Germany, they get some hefty kickbacks. And Russia's been paying that bill for years. Putin said he had had enough. But let's listen to how they're going to blame everything on Russia. Listen. Your gas prices have gone up. I want to talk to you a little bit about why. A lot of it has to do with Vladimir Putin. Got to remember, uh, Jim Psaki is, the reality is that Russia is one nothing of the but going to every everything that, that the people in Washington do is scripted. I don't know if you guys are aware of this. But people like Pasaki, she's told what she can say. She's told what questions she can answer. Journalists that come in are limited on what they're allowed to ask. And, uh, and they're told what they're allowed to ask. And of course, the answers are already given. I know this because I have friends that are there that tell me how that they deal with this, how they deal with the media. Uh, in fact, I was told that only Vladimir Putin is the only world leader that does not go by script. Listen to what she says, though, in her scripted message to the American public. Oil producers in the world and the fact that they have started this conflict, invaded a foreign country, and they are such a big producer of oil in the world. It's OK. The we invaded Iraq. It's OK that we overthrew Libya, right killed Muammar Gaddafi. It's OK that uh, we overthrow, you know, Egypt. There are a few facts you should be aware of. U.S. production of oil and gas is rising. In fact, in the first year of the Biden presidency, there was more oil and gas produced in the United States than in the first year of the Trump presidency. And there's opportunities to produce more from here. But part of this is on the oil companies. Right now, there are 9,000 approved unused permits that oil and gas companies could tap into now to ramp up production. So what the president is doing is ensuring we're taking steps here to get more oil out into the global marketplace. That includes the release of 40 million barrels from the Strategic Petroleum Wonder why they didn't get anything moving a little while back, Ms. Pisaki, right? Well, it's because Hunter and them, they need to be able to make money off of Russia, so we need to be able to buy from somewhere else, right? Uh. ...back in the fall, and he just announced their planned release of an additional 30 million barrels. The only way to protect the United States over the long term is to become energy independent. That's why the president has been so focused on investing in clean energy technologies so that we can rely on that and not President Putin to set the price of gas. Oh, so nice. So eloquently put, right? What a bunch of nonsense. American hurting over gas prices called bull on Biden's claim. Can't do much. Russia responsible. Uh, oh, here's Andrew here with EMP Shield. By the way. Get an EMP shield. Please get one. INL50. Use your coupon code. You'll save $50 when you get it. Uh, we're going to get Andrew on here with us for, before too long uh, to talk about the EMP shield. But, uh, you know, I just saw Andrew's smiling face there, so I wanted to share that with you there. Uh, so let's listen to what some of the people have to say about Biden and his plan. I put my car up, then I paid in over two years. I paid $75 for one bill up. I paid 60 bucks to fill, fill up my tank yesterday. That's a little too much. Yeah. My bus I drive gets about five miles a gallon. So I might not be going anywhere. And then when we have potential to take care of some of our own needs rather than go foreign with all of our needs. Well, I wonder if you actually uh, discuss this issue with the people who are actually in charge of the uh, drilling and, and producing oil. So. I think we need a better answer than that. You can't go electric overnight. I mean, people can't afford to buy a car every year or or even the price of the cars. You've got to have what you have and take care of it. All right. Russia is responsible. Look there. Russia is responsible. That's always the case, right? Russia is responsible. My reaction to that. So, now... Let me let me just kind of share something with you here. The one lady talked about can't go electric overnight can't buy a new car every year. That's why you do need an MP shield. That's part of the plan. When they go to take down the United States, they're going to use an EMP attack on this country. That's going to cripple all the cars. You ever wonder why COVID and all of a sudden they, oh, they said we can't get computer chips, so we can't manufacture new cars. You know, 
the United States could have easily had a company pick up the, the job on making the computer chips for these cars and it could have already done it. And we wouldn't have had the crisis of fuel cars. They stopped the production of fuel cars because they want to go electric. And they're planning on allowing Russia and China to attack this country, not only to collapse the country, but also to collapse the economy, to collapse uh, your our fossil fuel cars so that we would be forced to go to the new technology of electric cars. And so the rich can only get richer. The car makers then would just have a bonanza of sales. But will everybody be able to afford to do that? That's why I like the idea of the MP shield, because I want to have a little protection when it comes to that. So just in closing, I'll go ahead. I wasn't planning on doing this, but uh, because Andrew's smiling face was on my advertisement there, EMPShield.com, go there when you're shopping. If you get a vehicle protection, which to me is the most important one, they got it for everything. They got it for your ham radios. They got it for your for your uh, solar generator. They are solar panels. They have it for your gas generator. They got it for European models, American models. It doesn't matter what you need. You can get it. You add that to your cart. And I don't care if you buy one item or if you buy 10 items. And my cart's getting expensive because I keep doing this to show you guys. It's not because I'm buying it. It's just for showing you how it works. But it's a good good thing here too because every time I do it, you see you're getting 50 bucks off. That just pro proves the point. The coupon code INL for Israeli News Live 50. You got to apply that code if you want to save 50 bucks. Not to mention, they will donate a little money towards the ministry that we do here, which we appreciate. Um, you know, but the only reason I promote it is because I believe in the product. So once you apply that code, you saved another $50 off. It goes from whatever the price was. If it was $389, it drops $50 off of that. Uh, let's go to proceed to checkout so we can actually see. We see we already shows. They've already moved $150. So I've done it three times here in the last couple of weeks showing you guys. So yeah, so the coupon code has already applied. $150 off of the different orders that I was just playing around with to show you how the system works here. So listen, definitely check it out. It's something you ought to do, something that I think that is good insurance because I'm not interested in buying an electric car just because they want to try to force us into it. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening and God bless you.